Hello? Oh, are you there? Uh, wave if you can see me. Oh, brilliant, you are there. Fantastic. Welcome to another uh, messy church. Brilliant that you're there and able to join us. Um, fantastic, uh, because you've got lots of exciting things uh, planned uh, for you, so don't go away. It's been a while since we last got together. I hope you had a fantastic Christmas. I know it's pretty tough not being at school at the moment in this lockdown, but we do look forward to the time when we can be together again properly. Won't that be exciting? Well, we've got uh, lots of things planned. We've got some, uh, I think some cooking stuff, some craft, uh, and we're going to discover more about this amazing person called Jesus. Uh, find out who he is and why it's so brilliant to get to know him. And if you've been around for a few months, you'll know that we're exploring Jesus through some of the words that he said that begin with, I am. I wonder if you can remember uh, some of those things that we've been discovering uh, when Jesus said, I am the oh, good, I am the good shepherd, that's right. Um, or I am the, it's a clue, I am the bread, yes, bread of life. And we looked at another one as well. I am the light of the world, well remembered. Well, today we're thinking about a time when Jesus said something quite strange. He said, I am the door or the gate. But keep listening and we'll find out a bit more about what Jesus meant when he said, I am the door. But I thought we'd start with a quick quiz. I always enjoy a quick quiz. And this is a quiz about doors. I don't expect any of you have done a quiz about doors before, but here goes. So I'm going to show you some famous doors. And I wonder if you can tell me where I might find these doors or what building or what place they belong to. Um, don't worry if you're not sure. You can always ask maybe an adult if you get stuck with some of the questions. But here is the first one, ready for, first one, ready for our great door quiz. So here's the first question. Well, these aren't doors, actually they're gates, but does anyone recognize them? Or know who you might meet if you went through these gates and met the owner of the house behind these gates? I'm sure some of you know, have a think. Anyone got any ideas? Well, they are the gates of Buckingham Palace. Correct, home of Her Majesty the Queen. Wow, just imagine those gates being opened up to you and getting to meet or hang out with the Queen. I guess you'd need to be pretty special, wouldn't you, to have those gates opened and to meet none other than Her Majesty herself. Okay, that was the first door or gate. Ready for the next question? This one's a bit more tricky. Uh, these are doors to an old city. I wonder if you know the name of the city or can guess the country where you would find this city and these doors. And the clue is think of long walls and think of pandas. Anyone got any ideas? Maybe you guessed the country. These doors are found in a country called China. And they are famous doors. Doors that lead to a city called the Forbidden City. And perhaps not surprisingly, those doors are closed. It's saying access forbidden, uh, no entry. Okay, two questions done. Here's the next one. This is a door to a house or a home, but the question is who lives at this house? And there's a bit of a clue if you spot the number on the front door of this door. Any ideas? Scratch your head a bit. Maybe ask an adult if you're stuck. Or maybe someone knows. Yes, it is right. Uh, this is number 10 Downing Street in London. And who lives there? the Prime Minister, the leader of the government, ah, and there he is. And here's something you might not have known about this particular door, this special door. It's a door that's always guarded, and only one that can be opened from the inside. 
So not even Boris Johnson can open it from the outside. Someone has to open the door from the inside to be let in. Three questions done, uh, two more to go. How about this next set of doors? Now, when I see these doors, I can only think of history and celebrations. It's a famous door to an abbey where kings and queens have been crowned and great royal weddings have taken place. But what's the abbey called? Anyone know? Sure you do. It is, yes, it is Westminster Abbey. And the last uh, famous couple to be married there were Prince William and Kate Middleton. And I watched the wedding and it's a wonderful uh, celebration, uh, a day of great excitement and joy. Right, well, can we come now to our final door? Now, it's not so much a door to a house, it's a door to a wardrobe. And the question is, if I went through this magic wardrobe, just like this girl Lucy Pevensey did, does anyone know where I would end up? Hmm. The name of the country or the place I'd end up if I went through that magical door into that magical wardrobe. Well, if you know the story of the lion, the witch and the wardrobe, you will know that this magic wardrobe and these doors take uh, Peter, Edmund, Susan and Lucy to a new world. The world of Narnia, yes. And to a life-changing encounter with Aslan, the great lion. Oh, well done if you got that right. So, so how did you do on my door quiz? If you got any right, you did really well. And we're going to think more about doors and what Jesus meant when he said, I am the door or the gate. So I'll see you in a moment. Bye. Hi everyone, it's Messy Church again. Hello Bert, you look a bit sad. Hello Sally, hello everybody. Well yeah, I'm, I'm really worried actually with this lockdown and staying at home. I've done what I've been told and asked to do, but not going to school. I love going to yeah. school Sally. And all my friends, I can't see all my friends either. When will it end? Well, we don't really know, but we're, there is some hope, isn't there? It is getting there. But think of all the good things you've been able to do, Bert. You've been able to have time with the family. We've had a lovely Christmas time and we've played games and we've watched videos and we've done lots and lots of cooking, haven't we? I love we? cooking, yeah. I know, those amazing buns you made the other day. Oh, and you. And you did some crafts. And what about all those wonderful walks we've been on? What about that lovely walk we went for in the woods the other day? Here's the photo look. Oh, yes. Yeah, that was a brilliant walk, Sally. Oh, and hello, everyone, again. Where have you been walking? Well, well we went for a walk in Wendover Woods, and we said it was just like Narnia because the frost was out and it was beautiful. Well, yes, you did say Narnia, Sally. But I don't know what Narnia is. <laughs> I'm sure you do. I'll remind you. Do you remember? Um, it's a very special land. And four children went through a wardrobe and they came out the back of it into this special land. Do I you know where that... I know the name of that book. A Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Fantastic. And in that book, there is a very special king who is a lion. A lion, Sally? Mm. Oh, a lion. Is he, is he good? Is he a bit scary? He's not scary. In fact, he's very, very safe. Um, and he only wants the best for us. Just like King Jesus, who we find in the Bible. Ooh. And the man who, made, who wrote this book was called C.S. Lewis. And he wrote lots of books, but he was a Christian. And this lion was very much like Jesus because he laid down his life as a sacrifice for us so that we could be with him in an amazing place forever. A bit like Narnia. Wow. Do, do we have to go through a wardrobe? Well, <laughs> just, 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 just like the children? No, we won't go through a wardrobe. But actually, Jesus did say that he called himself, I am the door. What, a wardrobe door, Sally? Not a wardrobe door, but he said, I am a door. I am the door. Whoever enters through me will be saved. 
and then we could be safe and not worried anymore. Absolutely, Bert. So, I was thinking, come on, let's cheer up and let's do some craft. Now, what we can do is we can find some boxes, a box, and we're going to make this box into a prayer box. And then we're going to put all our worries, all our the things that are making you sad, we can write them down and make a door in the box. And then we pop them into the door and we forget about them because we give them to King Jesus. And on the top of the box, just to remind us that this is a bit like a worry box, we can put this special little verse. It says, when your heart starts to worry and your mind is in a mess, drop your worries through the door and let King Jesus give you rest. So would everybody like to do that? Would you like to go and find all the bits and bobs? I would. I, I, I love making things. I want to make that prayer box. I'll go and find all the things we need, Sally. OK, see you in a minute. Hi, Bert. You're back. Hello, Sally. Yeah, I've got loads and loads of boxes. So Look at all these boxes I see. I've got. This one, this big shoe box, is probably too big. Unless you've got thousands of worries. No, there's a smaller one here. This oh, one. This one with... Truffles. Oh, there's still some in there, Bert. You need to eat those up first. Mm, mm. Um, but if you do want to use that box, I would wrap it in some pretty paper or some silver foil or anything you like, really, just to cover up the words. But this plain box is probably good, this nice white one, because we can put stickers on and um, they'll show up. Wow. Or you could put, put decorate it with tape, whatever you like, or felt tips. You do whatever you like, really. So, I'm going to show you now the tricky bit. Jesus said, I am the door. But what did Jesus mean when he said that? He didn't look like a door, he looked like a normal person. Well, this is what Jesus said. I tell you the truth, I am the door. Whoever enters through me will be saved or, or safe. Well, it's strange language, isn't it? What could he mean when he said, I am the door? Well, to answer that question, we need to go right back to the beginning, back to the start of the great story of the Bible. And the story begins with God making an amazing world. Not only did he make stars and planets and animals and plants, he made people, uh, people like you and people like me, people who were made and created to know and enjoy God. Uh, to know him not just as a creator or a king even, but also as their friend. And we get an amazing picture of that friendship in a special place called the Garden of Eden, right back at the start of the Bible. And as well as being a, an amazing, a beautiful place, it was the, the place where the first human beings enjoyed knowing God, uh, even walking and talking with God uh, each day. Wow. Well, just think about meeting the Queen. That would be pretty amazing, wouldn't it? And getting to know her and perhaps getting to talk to her. But imagine getting to meet and know God. That's what we were made to do, to know and enjoy an amazing friendship with God. Did you know that? But if you know the story, something, something terrible happened uh, back in the garden. Uh, human beings decided they didn't want to listen to God anymore. Uh, they wanted to be in charge. They thought they could uh, run God's world without God. And so they disobeyed his instructions and chose to be God's enemies rather than his friends. Of course, that ended that wonderful relationship. 
In fact, God had no choice but to, to remove them from the garden and to block the way back. A bit like those doors uh, to the, the, the forbidden city, doors that are closed, uh, a big no entry sign. See, when we act like God's enemies, uh, that friendship can't be mended. And as his enemies, God has the, the right to keep those doors closed forever. But that's not the end of the story. You see, in spite of the way we've treated God, ignoring him, acting like we're God sometimes, the Bible tells us that he still loves us and he still loves his, his messed up world that we've messed up. In fact, he's done something, something amazing so that we can know him and enjoy friendship with him again as friends rather than enemies. And like the famous door of number 10 Downing Street, we can't put things right. Only God can fix our broken relationship. He's the one who's got to open the door to let us back in. So how could God open the door for us and welcome us in? When we've acted like, like rebels, when we've disobeyed his instructions and, and messed up his world. See, God can't just ignore the wrong things we've done and said and thought. And he can't pretend it doesn't matter. But amazingly, God sent his son, Jesus, uh, into the world uh, on an exciting, amazing mission. And Jesus came not just to invite us back to God, but to pay for all the wrong things that we've done, to take our sin and all its consequences, even to be treated like an enemy of God so that we could be treated as friends again and welcomed back by God. And so Jesus is the door. It is through Jesus and what he's done for us that we can be welcomed back by God as his friends. And to go through the door, all we need to do is to, to say sorry for acting like rebels and enemies and to ask God to forgive us. And he promises that he will do because of Jesus. And did you know, when we go through that door, the Bible tells us that there's, there's a celebration, that God celebrates when his enemies become his friends, uh, when those on the outside uh, want to come inside. That is a right royal celebration as one person goes through that door back to the God who loves them. And can I say, being a friend of God because of Jesus uh, opens the door, well, to a, a wonderful adventure, a, a life of joy and, and excitement and wonder as we live life with him. Not, not, not ignoring him anymore, but now trusting him and following him. Just like uh, the thrill of Lucy finding that new world Narnia, getting to meet Aslan. So trusting uh, and following Jesus is the way to real life. Not dull, boring life, but what Jesus called life to the full, life to the max, brilliant life. Well, Jesus said, I am the door. And I was thinking, as I finish, I wonder what the most exciting door you've ever been through is. Do you know, I remember once going through the door of the, the space shuttle. That was pretty exciting. I didn't go to the moon or into space, but I went through the door of the space shuttle. Wow, that was pretty exciting. Do you know, going through the door, getting to know God through Jesus is much more exciting than anything else. So why not ask Jesus to open the door to the most amazing and wonderful adventure, an adventure of friendship with God that starts today and lasts forever. Jesus said, I am the door. Let's pray as I finish. Dear God, thank you so much that Jesus is the door, that he's opened the way for us uh, who were your enemies to get to know you as friends. Thank you that you've done everything to make that friendship possible. And so today I pray that each one of us would know what it
it's like to walk through that door, that's Jesus, and to enjoy getting to know you. Thank you for all the fun things we've been able to do and will do this afternoon. Thank you that Jesus is the door. Amen. Hello children and grown-ups, here we are again. Hope you've been keeping well and uh, managing to cope with spending so much time indoors. Well, we've got some activity, something you can make to keep you busy. Today we've been having the theme of Jesus helping us to know God the Father. And the illustration in the Bible uses that he's rather like a gate that opens the way for us to come to know God and to be with him. So we're going to make a gate uh, with a waffle. So these are waffles, we can do a gate, we're going to pipe along the ridges here to make it look like a gate. Mm -hmm. Or, if that's a bit difficult for the younger ones, we could always paint uh, all the inside bits uh, to make it look like a doorway. Oh, that which sounds might be nice. Easier with jam. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's one for you then, Rocky. Oh, thank you, Rocky. And I'll have a go at doing the gate. Now, grown-ups, I made this butter icing a little bit softer. And it does help if you've got an icing bag or a sandwich bag if you roll it down a bit first ah. and then put the spoon, the butter icing, oh, poke okay. it down as far oh, as you okay. can. So actually, it won't go all the way down. You aren't going to waffle on, are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got to waffle on a bit. So I just cut the end off like that. Oh, careful. Too big. And now I find that I can push the icing right down to the bottom, mm. which you can't do until you do that. It is a bit bit of children, you might find it a bit difficult, but have a go. You don't know till you try. No, that's right. And you'll only get better the longer you do it. So right. there you are, Rocky, there's your jam. Oh, thank you. Your nice softish jam, seedless jam that is. Yeah. Not too thick. I warmed it slightly. Ooh. And you can paint all inside the little window frames Ooh, there. And I'll Ooh. have a go doing this. Rocky, have you done oh, yeah, I'm, right? I like this. You like that, do you? I'm going to like it even more tasting it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is important. It's got to taste nice, isn't it? Oh, oh, right, I think I'm, you're going to do a bit more. So, um, which way up is your door? Is that like the window down the side of the yes. door across the top? Okay. So now what we need to do is put some hinges on. So, what do you want to use? A, I've got matchmakers here. It can be hinges. Um, do you want to use that? The hinges oh, and yes, door handle. Yeah. You can break bits off the right side. Okay. And I'm going to. Oh, hang on. Well, you might want to do that. If I break that up for you. Like okay. And then if I put mine. Oh, I've got to do like. Um, oh, hinges like that. <laughs> so that's our gate. Oops, hang on, I lost a bit off there. With oh. um, the hinges. Oh, oh, is your hinge off? off. Oh, never mind, sweetheart. Oh. You've done a good job. You can always carry on and finish it off a bit more if you want to. Okay, yeah. that's Rocky's door. Okay. Okay. And these are the ones I did earlier. Oh, what <laughs> we did earlier? Ones with the jam and those gaps of where the windows are for the, for the door. And this is a slightly neater gate, but... There you go. They should taste nice. You can toast them before you decorate them or you can just oh. them. So, the important thing is that every time you have a waffle now, it can be a reminder that Jesus is the gateway to knowing God the Father. So enjoy having, having a go at them. Bye-bye for now. Bye. 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 Hi there. Great to see you. For today's messy challenge, we're going to be making a door. Now, I don't know if you've noticed uh, but there are so many different types of door. I imagine your front door uh, to your house or apartment uh, probably looks very different to maybe the back door. And indeed then you've got different doors uh, inside your house. Some doors are made of wood, others of glass, uh, some are made of metal, or maybe a mix of all of those materials. There are bifold doors, sliding doors, there are concertina doors, stable doors, and indeed if you come to any of our churches, uh, you'll notice each has a very different door. At my church, uh, St John's in Ashley Green, we have a very old and very large wooden door. Now, to make our doors 
for this menacing change, we're going to need something. We're going to need some Lego or some Duplo. <laughs> finishes. However, there may be some things that you can use around your house to design and make your own door hanger. I've made this one by folding a piece of paper in half, I cut out a door, then I drew around the cup and cut out the hanger. I glued it all together, but not the door, glued it all together and then I decorated it. Another design looks like this. So I took a piece of card, I cut out the door, then I took an old envelope that I've been using to make these and I glued it to the envelope. Just cut it out. A 
and then a little slit and a circle for the door handle and then you can just decorate this one. Margot made a really lovely one from a toilet roll, a hair bubble and some paper. So Margot, how did you make yours? First, maybe take the hair bubble or elastic band or piece of string to the inside. Yep. Then cut out the door. Okay. Next, measure how much paper you need and cut it out. Okay. So, if I just measure it here, inside the toilet roll. First decorate it, okay, so first I decorate it. Okay, and then did you say stick it in? Stick it in. Okay. Let's see inside yours, Margot. So what would you do if you wanted to decorate the outside? If you have stickers or coloured papers, you can decorate the outside too. Oh, chocolate, my favourite. But how do I get to it? I know, I can jump the fence. Hmm, my ninja vaulting is very bad today. I know, maybe I can go around. No way around. Hmm, I know. Maybe I can go through these bars. No way through. What am I going to do? I want chocolate. Okay. You silly pranger. Why don't you just open the gates and go through? Yum, yum, yum. I'm so glad Shirley taught me about the gate. Now I've got my chocolate to eat. I'm a very happy ninja. That reminds me of another kind of gate. And it's a gate that I think we've just heard about. In the Bible, Jesus says, I am the gate. And whoever comes through me gets to the Father. That means gets to heaven. And when I eat my chocolate, I'll be thanking God for Jesus, the gate who lets me through into heaven. Shall we pray? Let's pray. Let's center our cause. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you not only for chocolate, but for Jesus, who told us he is the gate. And when we go through him, we can get to you. We thank you for him, for his life, and the way he taught us about how to reach you. And it's in his name we pray. Amen.
This is your friendly neighbourhood prayer ninja checking out with some chocolate. Fanny